welcome to the very first episode of the Babbling Bards podcast. A podcast geared towards all of our fellow Xenites in which we chatter at you about all things Xena from episodes to fun facts to the subtextiness of the show. I'm Liliana. I'm Trista. But before we dive in, a little bit about us. Well, I'm three decades old. I'm a Leo. I actually meant, like, what's your favorite episodes? Well, I definitely ain't married with fish sticks. I agree with that one. That was horrible. So what's your favorite scene in the episode? Uh, I'm going to have to go with the musical, The Bittersweets. I mean, what's not to love about The Bittersweets? And uh, The Greater Good was also one of my top episodes. And um, What about yours? Well, I'm a musical junkie. So I love Liar Liar Hearts on Fire because it was cheesy and corny. <laughs> I love The Bittersweet. Yeah. What about non-musical? I'll throw a wrench in it for me, why don't you? Uh, non-musical, gonna go with, is there a doctor in the house? There's lots of good episodes in Xena, though. But there were a couple of stinkers. Yeah, like, Married with Fish Sticks. And Daughter of Palmyra, I wasn't a fan of. I didn't really care for any of the Horde episodes. Neither did I. But the Abyss, I will say, was better the second time through. Alrighty, so today we're going to be talking about the, the pilot episode, Sins of the Past. Which was a really good one, considering that most pilot episodes tend to be not so good. I give it five chakras. I like the way that it introduced Xena through the flashbacks. And I love the way it introduced Little House on the Prairie, Gabrielle. <laughs> Speaking of Gabrielle, did you notice that uh, Renee O'Connor was not credited in the opening title sequence? She was only credited after the teaser and the, the theme song. I did notice that. Um, right before the guest credits roll. It pops up and it says, also starring Renee O'Connor, and then mm -hmm. guest starring Jay Lagaya, or however you say his name. Yeah. Um, but do you know why? why? She's not in the title sequence. Ask me. I just did. Why? Because, according to an interview in 2016 from Entertainment Weekly, Rob Tappert went on record and said that the network wouldn't allow them to have a shot of Xena and Gabrielle together in the same clip for the theme. Because they didn't want the audience to perceive it as a lesbian show. That's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. But Renee O'Connor did get credited in uh, starting in season two. She was in the theme credits. Yeah. With Lucy Lawless. But never in the same clip together. No. Because neither of the twain shall meet. <laughs> so, Sins of the Past. Sins of the Past. Let's talk. Starts off with a uh, flashback. Flashback scenes from uh, the Xena trilogy episodes, episodes of Hercules. Mm -hmm. And Xena's burying her shit. Burying her, her armor and her weapons. Yeah. And so she's burying it. Yeah. Her shamrock and her sword. <laughs> and Chakram. Yeah, Chakram. Chakram. Not according to Meg. Not according to Meg. It's her. a shamrock. Around killing things. Around killing things. So she's burying the chakram and her sword and her armor because I guess she wanted to get naked. No, she was trying to shed all, all of the, like, her sordid past. Right. So then she gets caught off guard by this noise. And it's Hector. Hector. Rounding up the villagers, the villagers from Podadia. And so, Xena does something very Xena-like. <laughs> and she hides behind a bush. And then she right. stares with those big, bright blue eyes. And she's just watching the exchange. Right. And then who catches her eye? Gabrielle. 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 Who's reddish blonde haired. Yeah. No Clairol. <laughs> no L'Oreal. But her hair magically changes throughout the series. But we're still in red-headed Gabrielle face. Right? Right. Okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So, there they are, rounding up the Potadians. And out comes Gabrielle, doing what she does best. Talking? You know, yeah, talking. You know, let, let all the villagers go and just take me. Well, you know what the problem with that was? What? They heard her talking. <laughs> so... They didn't want to take her without cutting her tongue out. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, so she talks. Yeah. 
They're pretty much like, oh yeah, we're gonna take you. But we're gonna take all of you. All you guys are going. And then Hector yeah. is caught off by surprise by Xena's foot whacking him across the face. Right. Her <laughs> leg just kind of <laughs> magically somehow <laughs> somehow just funny. slaps him across the <laughs> face. <laughs> and very well done scene. Very yeah. unbelievable, but I think yeah. the un- the unbelievableness of Xena is what makes it like a really awesome, endearing show. <laughs> that and the friendships that were created. Yeah. So, she starts kicking Hector's butt. Right. And then, dude rushes her with a spear. She takes the spear from, from him, mm-hmm. makes him her bitch, knocks him down. And then she gets distracted by Gabrielle again. Right. So she throws the spear at the at the at the dude who's trying to trying to gather up Gabrielle. Hits him in the chest. He goes down, and then Gabrielle finishes him off with with a, with kick. a kick. And Zena's just standing there watching her. Mesmerized, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and she gets clunked from behind. Boom! Down she goes. She hits the ground. Right. And then, just when you think there's no hope for the warrior princess, and Hector's lifting his sword to... <laughs> out comes the shamrock. The sword... Sword first? Oh, yeah, sword first. Sword first, and then the chakram. So... Throws a chakram. All like, the swords go flaccid. All the swords <laughs> get chopped in half. Yeah. So. She wins. Of course. She wins that battle. So now we're cutting to Potidea. Mm-hmm. And we see Lila, Gabrielle's sister, played by... Willa O'Neill. Willa O'Neill. Who is a Kiwi. And <laughs> I didn't know she was a Kiwi. So when we were watching the behind the scenes for Who's Gurkhan, mm-hmm. and I heard her speak in her native Kiwi accent, I was like, whoa! I get pretty hard. Yep, she's a New Zealand resident. So that was surprising. So Lilla is called by her name in this, but Hecuba, Gabrielle's mother, who is also tending Xena's wounds, is not. Not on screen. She and Herodotus are both credited as Hecuba and Herodotus. And then credits. But they're never called by their names on screen until Until season four. Right. Is it season four? No. Season three. I don't remember. Well, why not? A family affair. Family affair. Yeah. Yeah. That one. So, they're tending the wounds. Gabrielle's chit-chatting with Xena while, you know, her boo-boos are being helped. (laughs) And... In walks Herodotus and Perdiccas number one. Dull, Perdiccas. stupid version. Dull, stupid version. Oh. So, Potidea gr- is, uh, has a plethora of miracle grow. Right, because the second, the second Perdiccas shrunk. And, uh, he's Gabrielle Beware size. Beware Greeks bearing gifts and <laughs> return to Caluso. Yeah, he's. <laughs> he shrunk down to Gabrielle size. Because he left <laughs> Potidea where all the miracle grow lives. <laughs> So, but I like Perdiccas number two better than the first one. If I have to like Perdiccas, I'll go with Perdiccas two. Yeah. But I don't have to like Perdiccas. <laughs> okay. So I refuse. This is for my friend! Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. So anyway. <laughs> Herodotus comes in. Gabrielle's father. Mm-hmm. And he says, Xena would like you to leave. Being, you know, the Herodotus-shaped ass that he is. Yeah. And Gabrielle pulls the, but father, she saved us card. Hush, daughter. Daughter, hush. Daughter, hush. There we go. Daughter, hush. (laughs) So, Xena's all like, well, I'm gonna move on anyway. Screw you guys. Yeah. And Perdiccas, one, tries to get Gabrielle to come with him, and she's like, I want to stay and talk to Xena. Yeah. And she tells him, pretty much just because we're betrothed, doesn't mean you can 
Order me around. Order me around. Boss me around. Yeah. So she sticks around and tells Zena pretty much she has to take her with her. She doesn't belong there. She doesn't belong there, which a lot of people saw that as the first evidence of subtext. Subtext. Because she doesn't fit in. She doesn't belong. She's She's different from everybody else. But Zena tells her no. And that she's going to go to Amphipolis. And because Gabrielle is all studied maps and stars, she's like, like, that's in Thrace, isn't it? Yeah. And if Zena hadn't confirmed it, even though she did tell Gabrielle not to follow her, we all know that Gabrielle doesn't listen that well because hope. (laughs) Primary example of not listening well. Yeah. But Zena leaves. Gabrielle, of course, follows. All right. She tries to sneak out in the middle of the night, being all, trying to be all quiet, but... Not graceful at this point. Stumbles over a chair, wakes Lilla. (laughs) And then tells Lilla that she's going to join Xena on the road. Because she wants to be a warrior. To be a warrior. But Lilla points out that... uh, Gabrielle, I can... uh, Hey, what is I can like? beat you I up. I can beat you up. Yeah. And Gabrielle's like, yeah, but you're very strong for your age. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, there's a very tearful goodbye in a room that's quite different from the room that we see in a family affair. Right. Where she goes out through the door, there wasn't... There wasn't a door. There. It was like a really good-sized window right. in a, a family affair. Uh-huh. But in Sins of the Past, there was a door. So it's either a continuity error, uh-huh. or <clears throat> they moved rooms, or <laughs> added on to the or house. On. Yeah. So, she goes out the door, and then we cut to Xena, riding on Argo, who has undergone a few changes. Right. Because they get to the bridge, and Argo kind of freaks out, and... Zena says, oh, what's the matter, boy? Which, again, is a continuity error. Either that or they just didn't expect the series to get picked up. Right, because in all the other episodes, Argo is referred to as a sheep. Argo's a, a mare in the, in the other episodes. Not a stud. Yeah. <laughs> and it's confirmed in the episode Livia that... Where we have Argo Jr. We have Argo Jr. And right. that's Argo's daughter. Mm-hmm. So, Argo is is gone through a few changes. <laughs> Very indecisive horsey. So, Zena goes, she's captured by the Cyclops, who she's blinded. Right. He's not too happy about that. Well, because how can you go back to eating mutton when you're used to human flesh? flesh. But she doesn't care. She yeah. chakrams his pants down. Right. He falls. And, oh, <laughs> poor guy. I feel bad for the blind Cyclops. Yeah. And then, shortly thereafter, when Xena runs off, we learn that Gabrielle is not a fan of bridges. Right. Because she, too, comes to the same Cyclops bridge. And yeah. <laughs> she's crossing it. The bridge will hold me up. The bridge will hold, hold me up. up. She does it like three times, then she darts across. Darts across, gets captured by the Cyclops. <laughs> Cage over her. <laughs> and then she does what she does best. Uh, just talk. Talk. She talks her way out of everything. You know, but she's not as chatty in the later episodes. No. She grows up a lot on yeah. the road with Xena, but she kind of didn't have a choice. Right. You know? Yeah. But anyway... So, she's captured by the Cyclops, and, you know, she tells him, as way of threat, I know Xena, the warrior princess. Oh, he hates Xena, the warrior princess. But so does Gabrielle. (laughs) At least right now. I guess she's not clued into the subtext yet. (laughs) She understands subtext like I do. (laughs) Which is not very well, people. No, not at all. Trista's not smart with the subtext. No. No. It's really bad. (laughs) So, 
you guys hear me being a little sarcastic and bitter <laughs> about certain episodes, that's oh. why. Because I've rewatched three times. And some of those scenes I've seen about seven to twenty times. <laughs> Ask me how that works. Yeah, because you keep missing stuff. Either that or it's something that's not really there and people see it as there, so. It's there because after I pointed it out to you, you're like, oh. <laughs> You'd think by now I would get smart. And after, like, the first time, I just said, oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> but oh. Liliana's favorite thing to do to Trista is, did you see that? Did you see the way they looked at each other? See where their hands were? Did you see that? Did you hear what they said? Hear what they said? No. Okay, put it back. Put it back. Rewind. Put it back. <laughs> she had Zach's torture on me. <laughs> Not really. But, yeah. It's, yeah. I'm not the brightest crayon in the Crayola box when it comes to subtext. <laughs> so anyway. Well, anyway, back to Cyclops. Cyclops. Gabrielle promises him, him an arm. And then he asks if she would throw in a leg, too. She says, well, she's got two of them, doesn't she? She does. But. Then doesn't he ask for, like, the eye, eyes or something? And she's like, well, don't get too greedy now. And he's all like, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. So he's like, all excited. Maybe, maybe you could bring me a, let's not get greedy. Right. So he but gets before all excited. that, she's all like, he says, how's a little thing like you going to kill her? And he's, like, right. I mean, he's, he's blind. He doesn't know she's little. I mean, she's fun size. She's like trial toothpaste size. Yeah, but to but, him, like, all humans are little. But then she makes that, that off-the-cuff comment it's about, the assassins. Oh, well, if they'd send an assassin after her, uh -huh. she'd never let a man get that close to do her. At least not that, that kind, kind of, of do her. <laughs> and then another line that a bunch of people perceive as subtext. Right. And it's, oh, but someone as sweet and innocent as me, I'll sneak up on her and catch her unaware. Right. And she did just that. Yeah. So anyway, Cyclops lets her go. Xena goes and sees Draco. Draco. Who's got fabulous hair. <laughs> I don't know what's up with that hair. Liliana loves Draco's hair. No. No, I do not. <laughs> so. I, I don't he, understand that hair, do you? He tells Xena that, you know, he's pictured her being with him in love or against him in battle. battle. And. Then she tells him that she's planning on going home to Amphipolis. Mm -hmm. And he says, oh, you can't go home to Amphipolis. You don't belong there. They won't welcome you back. No, they won't accept you. Because yeah. what was it that happened to him when he went back home to see his father? He got beat with a sledgehammer. With, by a blacksmith. Blacksmith hammer, hammer. By his by father. his father. Yeah. Ow. So that was unfortunate. Right. Then Draco, of course, formulates a plan mm -hmm. with Hector. He tells them to invade Amphipolis. Well, Xena, being Xena, thinks something's up, so she sneaks up on on the horseback. Right? Right. So he sends Hector out to go spy on her to right. see what she's doing. And Hector <laughs> can't find Xena because he sees Argo. Yeah. But Xena's in a tree. She's in a tree. Going from horse to horse, knocking off the henchmen. And I, I don't understand how Hector doesn't hear that and doesn't realize that she's doing that right behind him. Back in those days, though, it's hard. It would be hard to tell, you know, because you're used to hearing sounds like that, especially if you're in war. You may tune it out. I don't know. I, don't know. I wasn't there. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> It was in the script for him not to hear. All right. So. so she jumps on his horse, knocks him down, puts the pinch on him. The pinch! The pinch! The pinch changes. Yes. Because in the first episode, she tells him that he's got 20 seconds to live. And right. in all the successive episodes afterwards, 30 seconds. 30 seconds to live. However, if you really cut off the flow of blood to someone's brain, they would only live for about. 12 seconds. 
what I was thinking. So everybody she's put the pinch on should have been dead. Because mm-hmm. you can't question anyone that well in 12 seconds. I mean, and they last longer than 30 seconds. <laughs> Well, maybe not to them. They don't. Maybe it's just to us because we're like, watching the counter on the DVD player. Sitting there watching, like, okay, it's been past thirty seconds. You should be dead already, right? <laughs> He's still ticking. <laughs> so, puts the pinch on him. He tells her all of Draco's plans, right? And she goes to Amphipolis to warn tells the me. village. Tells her that uh, they're planning. I'm invading Amphibolus. Amphibolus. Amphipolis. Amphipolis. Yeah. <laughs> Acidophilus. Acidophilus. <laughs> As Lucy Lawless called it in yeah. one of the coffee talks because she couldn't remember what it was. She couldn't, yeah, couldn't remember Amphibolus, so she called it Acidophilus. Acidophilus. <laughs> so she's going yeah. to warn everybody. And she's going to see one of my favorite characters in the series. Cyrene. I love Cyrene. Irene. However, Cyrene was kind of not not my favorite person in this episode, though. Not in the beginning. Not in way. the beginning. At the end, yeah. Right. But not in the beginning. In the beginning, she, you know, takes Zena's sword from her. Yeah. And she tells her weapons are not welcome in her tavern, and neither is she. And neither is she. And it's like, oh, Cyrene, well. not your finest hour. Why do you hurt me so? <laughs> So anyway, then we go back to Draco. Mm-hmm. So Hector goes back and tells him what happens, and then Draco's all, you know, sent you to find out what she was doing, not for you to tell her what we were doing. And then they proceed to fight Sweet. after Draco tells him to choose his weapons, mm-hmm. which is a big deal. Because for a warlord to tell someone else that he's challenged to choose the weapons is a sign of honor. And, like, a lot of the warlords that you see in Xena, you don't think of them as being people with honor. Mm-hmm. Because warlord. But Draco... Draco is. Draco has honor. Right. Um, he may be a ruffian. Bad guy. But... I like Draco, though. I do, too. <laughs> I do, too. He's one of, I think, one of my favorite bad guys on there. Yeah. Um, but yeah. so they fight, he kills Hector, then we cut back to Xena, who has gone back into the tavern to talk with Cyrene, mm-hmm. and she go back, she, no, she, she went did. back in the tavern to talk with Cyrene, and then she's talking with her, and She tells Cyrene that she's trying to turn around and she has Cyrene convinced. Then all the villagers come in. Villagers, yeah. Because they see Draco's army. But they think it's her army. They think it's her army because Draco instructed his army to go out and carry her banners. And chant her name. And chant her name. So they're thinking that, you know, she's been lying. a quick one on them. Yeah. And they think it's her army, and then they're all, you know... So at that point, Cyrene tells the villagers, oh, do what you will with her. Do what you will. And then she runs off. So they're all, you know, you're not... You already took our sons, you know, not again. We remember. We remember. And then she gets a stone chunked at her. By a chick that had too much collagen injections. Right. (laughs) So she says... Is one woman too much for you? Let's even the odds. How about one unarmed woman? So here comes the stones flying, and then who pops in? Gabrielle! Gabrielle to the rescue. Oh, Gabrielle! (laughs) Doing again what she does best. Talking Talking her way out of situations. Now, you don't know me. I'm new in town. But she tells them that Xena's done some things in the name of good. And they're pretty much denying it because she's brought Draco down on the valley, according to Head Turban Guy. Right. (laughs) And Gabrielle's like, okay, Draco's a scary guy, but he, uh, let's say that Xena's his buddy. No, let's say that Xena's his girlfriend. Let's say, yeah. How's he gonna feel knowing you knocked off his woman? Yeah. 
villagers are all like, oh, okay, we don't want that. Well, fine, we'll just get her out of here. So, so takes off with them. Yep. So they leave. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then... Oh, how did Gabrielle make it to Amphipolis? Oh, that's right. How did she make it? The old man that knew Oedipus. Well, he knew Oedipus. He knew Oedipus. Yeah. He saw him around. He saw him around. <laughs> he didn't really know him. Saw, didn't know him. He, he saw, saw him around. around. He saw him around. And then after that, when yeah. she catches a ride with the old man that's going to Amphipolis. She catches the ride uh-huh. on the back of his wagon. And then there's an oopsie. We see Zena riding on Argo. Right. So she's got her sword and her chakram. Uh-huh. And then they switch, switch sides. sides. And then they just disappear. Well, Lucy Lawless did say that the chakram was her favorite part because it was magic. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Alright, we jump back. Let's jump back to present time. Alright. And so Gabrielle takes Zena out of there and they go to see Lysias, who's Xena's baby brother. Zena's, yeah, a little brother. And she has a lot of guilt because of Lysias' death. Mm-hmm. Part of what made her an easy target for people like Alti and people that corrupted her to do, you know, badness. Yeah. yeah. Because she's carried around the guilt. For so she long. feels like it's her fault that he died. Mm-hmm. Well, that and everything that happened with Malila too. Because that was when she really switched to, you know, a new Xena is born tonight. Right. But Lysias' death still, I think, played a huge chunk in that. Yeah. So, that, you know, your own mother vanish- banishing you from the right. village. Yeah. So... She talks to Lysias and tells him that it's tough being alone. And then there's another subtext line that a lot of viewers thought was subtext, where Gabrielle says... Gabrielle pops in and says, you're not alone. And then that's the first time you see Xena give, like, a genuine smile. It's not cocky, arrogant, war lord's gonna get their ass kicked smile. (laughs) So, she smiles almost gratefully at Gabrielle. All right. And then, then we we go back to Draco in yeah. Amphipolis. Draco and the villagers. Meeting with head turban guy. <laughs> the head village guy. Yeah. yeah. So he wants to know where Zena is. Zena is. And he doesn't all, care about the loot wagons they fixed up no, for him. No, they're all fixed up some loot wagons for you, you know. When you're in the area, we'll supply your army. We'll supply and your army as long as you, you know, leave us alone. And, but Draco's not interested in that. He just wants Xena. He wants Zena. So he thinks the villagers are lying because they won't tell him where Xena is. Right. And then Xena's like, they're not lying, Draco. I'm right here, dude. You know? <laughs> and then he said, I said that I dreamt of having you in love or being against you in, in battle. battle. And you won't give me the satisfaction of of either. either. So, choose your weapons. Again, second time, Draco exemplifies having honor. Mm -hmm. And Zena says, you choose the weapons, I'll choose the conditions. conditions." So he picks staffs, Mm -hmm. and she picks the scaffold. Fight on the scaffold, which she probably grew up playing on. (laughs) Probably. But it was probably a little better put together when she was little. Because <laughs> they just, they broke the shit out of that thing. They did. But, uh, I and then she seen. also threw in, uh, first one to hit the ground dies. Mm-hmm. So, and you got the two of them up there fighting. And then, after they, the scaffold's yeah. all broken to bits, <laughs> they got nowhere else to fight but on top of everybody's heads and shoulders. So, <laughs> and the villagers were more than happy to offer their heads and shoulders right. to a woman that they were getting ready to stone to death. Yeah, after they had told her, you know, get out of here, we don't want you here. Now they're all of a sudden. Doesn't that, doesn't that make you cranky? <laughs> it does. Now all of a sudden they're all like, Zena, you can use my shoulders or you know, get them, Zena. And 
like, really? Dude, really? You were just, like, about to stone her, <laughs> and now you're like, hey, you know, use my head and shoulders. <laughs> right? That was not a plug for head and shoulder shampoo. But right? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> so they're fighting on the shoulders and heads, and then we've got a cameo appearance in the crowd. Right. The guy that's wearing the turban that she spins around on his head on. Is none other than Rob Tappert. Rob Tappert. Creator of Creator Xena. Of Xena. And he He cameos in a couple of episodes. But the one in Sins of the Past does not look anything like Rob Tappert. <laughs> but Rob is the one that said in an interview uh -huh. that all the extras had gone home. He stepped in to help film that scene out. All right. And so you know, there he was. There he was. Got his yep. head stood on. Yep. So, Cena yep. knocks Draco, Draco back. back. Gar, one of his henchmen. Gar is, that's the first time the name Gar is used. Uh-huh. In Xena. It's recycled in the episode Paradise Found. Right. The one with Aiden. Which you didn't care for. I didn't care for Aiden. I didn't care for Aiden either. I like the episode, but not yeah. the Aiden. Yeah. Yeah. The Aiden bugged me. But and the chakram is rampant in that episode. <laughs> it is, like in all the designs. Right. But we'll get to yeah. that. We'll get to that. Okay. Jump ahead. Jump ahead. I'm sorry. I get so excited. So, Draco, like, goes, and he's about to fall down. Gar steps up and catches him. So mm -hmm. he doesn't hit the ground because, you know, he hits the ground. He dies. He throws him back up. Well, Gabrielle wasn't going to let that happen again. So, second time... She politely stuck her foot out. <laughs> second, and he goes, boom! Yeah, second time that Draco hits... Well, this time he hit the floor. But, uh, yeah, Gabrielle sticks out her her foot and Gar face plants. So and then Xena jumps off the shoulders onto Draco's chest. Right. <laughs> she tells him, you hit the ground, but I, I haven't. haven't. You ready to negotiate that deal now? Or do they need to kill you? And oh, I mean, but his his guys weren't going to kill him. Because they were all like... They were chicken shits, anyway. Yeah, they were like, oh, Xena hit the ground. They were ready to mm -hmm. shoot arrows at her. But they kind of, like... Eh, yeah, Backed off gonna, when it was Draco. Not going to shoot our boss? <laughs> <laughs> Are you crazy, dude? <laughs> so... So he agrees to... To leave Amphibolus. Leave Amphibolus. Leave everybody alone. Uh -huh. And then Gar goes to kind of sneak up on Xena and stab her. And Draco chunks his dagger at him. <laughs> Kills well, him. Well, a deal's a deal. Deal's a deal. Both. Then he leaves. And then Cyrene comes in and she hugs Xena and she becomes the Cyrene that, that we know and love. <laughs> and... <laughs> And then the head turban guy is like, you can take the loot wagons, of course. You can take them. I don't want them. She just wanted to go home. She, she just want wanted to see mommy. She didn't want the loot wagons. They treated her so mean. They did. It was so wrong. It was wrong doing. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. So, they leave Amphipolis. Well, they're going to leave Amphipolis. And right. Xena's on Argo. And uh -huh. Gabrielle tells her, hey, I bet I could fit up there behind, behind you. Behind you. She's like, like, no. And Gabrielle's no. like, you're not just going to leave me here. I saved your ass. And then, yeah, she pulls the guilt card. Pulls the guilt card. Yeah, I saved you back there. And so, in, a, in an area that's also considered a very subtexty area. Right. Xena reaches down, lifts Gabrielle up. And because of the shit-eating gr grins on their faces. <laughs> right off together. They ride off together into the sunset. <laughs> and then they camp in two different areas. How romantical is that? <laughs> like, Gabrielle comes over, you know, all shivering. I can't get my fire started. Because Xena has to get her fire started. <laughs> all right. And I don't get subtext. Come on. All right. <laughs> so, 
yeah, Zena throws her a blanket. Yeah, throws you can blanket. Gabrielle's right not a fan of the eagle sized mosquitoes. And and you guys, I'm from Georgia originally. Mosquitoes are our state bird. That's crazy. <laughs> they really grow to be about the size of an eagle in Georgia. That's insane. It's and they don't feel good when they bite you either. I bet. So anyway, they're talking and the campfire scene was a little different. What we got in the finished product was a little different from the way right. it originally was supposed to be. Right. Because the way that it originally ended mm -hmm. was with Xena lamenting about her old life with her army cook. Right. She missed, she missed, she missed the cooking. She missed the cooking. Because Zena doesn't cook. No. And that was Gabrielle's big foot in the door of, oh, you should keep me around because I can cook. Cook. Because she's from <laughs> Potadilla, where they vegetate until they die. <laughs> and so the the sh they didn't want to end the show on a comedic note. Right. So they did the the more serious ending of them having the nice intimate campfire right. talk and then riding off the next day. Right. And then Gabrielle tells her, you know, that friends stick around and Zena's like, okay, friend. And we all know what Zena means when she says friend. <laughs> so there you have episode one, Sins, Sins of, of the, the past. past. And you guys will be happy to know that no eagle sized mosquitoes were harmed during the making of this motion picture. Just kidding, because why? There are no disclaimers in the first few episodes. Not until the episode Cradle of Hope. We love the disclaimers. We love the disclaimers. <laughs> but even after Cradle of Hope, they were uh, sporadic. Mm -hmm. At yeah. best. And there then they became a, them, yeah. yeah, and then they became a staple up until the episode The Way. Right. And then they did the public service announcement right. for the Indo American Foundation. Right. But we'll get into that when we discuss that. Yep. For right now, you guys, keep your chakras at the ready. All right. And then Battle our next, on. Our next uh, one will be second episode's Chariots of War. Chariots of War. Not one of my favorites. I don't mind either. But we're going to yeah. talk about it anyway. All righty. It's what we do. All right. Until All right. then. Later, guys.